Dragon Rampant is on the table with a brand spanking new army. Before we look at the new army, let's look at the old. Today we'll be playing a scenario using 24 AP matched armies. For the undead, we have a unit of scouts, banshees actually. I'm using the list from the graveyard dwellers in the back of the Dragon Rampant rulebook. One unit of light missiles, we have two units of light foot, that's the skeletal spearmen here. And then to round things out, we've got a summoner with his elite foot bodyguard. And that's a total of 23 points so far, so we went ahead and threw down one point for the almost useless ravenous hordes. The zombies, who are, of course, everyone on this list is un classed as undead. They are going to be going up against the Dark Elves. On the far right, we've got our leader, a general on foot. It's a guy in a little blue fringe there. He should be able to... Sh show up pretty well on camera. This is a unit of heavy infantry. I do have a unit of light missiles, crossbow armed, little hand crossbow armed fellas. I purchased the sharpshooter upgrade for those guys. And then sliding over to look at the other half of the army, we have some wonderful lizard mounted elite riders. We've got a unit of scouts and of course the big guy, a tree demon who counts as a greater war beast. Six strike points for him. We're using reduced model count for that figure alone. Again, this is a 24 AP army. And one thing I want to point out here real quick is these scouts here you see on the left. I painted these guys some years ago just as a war band for kind of skirmish games. And I've tried to match the color, this orange and gold and red, across the army to kind of tie them in. And I think it did a pretty good job. The bases look a little bit different, but I think we can overlook that. Today we're going to be playing Into the Valley of Death. We are on the edge of the Boneyard. The two giant skulls block all movement and all line of sight. The grasslands are considered rough going, and they do provide cover if you're shooting into them. They do slow movement by half, unless you are fleet-footed. One of these two armies, either the Undead or the Dark Elves, is going to be on the attack, and we're going to roll a d6. High Roller is the attacker. Blue for the blue fringe, red for undead. Let's find out who it is. The undead will be the attacker. The blue is the defender. Death chase is what the Dragon Rampant rulebook calls this scenario. It's scenario C. The undead have to set up first, and the undead general has put his elite foot back here. He has put one unit of light infantry here, and his light shooters back here. He is not allowed to deploy within... Basically, he has to deploy on the back side of the table edge. He also has to put at least one unit on each side of the table in contact with that side of the table. The one unit he selected over here is his unit of scouts. His banshees are going to camp out in this little grassland here and act as spoilers. They're hoping to draw people into that area so that they can fight on favorable grounds. You will notice... The second unit of light foot and the zombies are not on the table. Remember that our undead master is a summoner. For his action, he can roll an activation on a six up. He gets to summon one of those units within six inches of himself, which may be the only way to get those zombies into any position to do any good. For their part, the dark elves have put their light missiles down here on the near side, backed up by Big Sweaty, the tree demon. And our general is right in the middle of the table. Elite riders, and then one more unit of scouts. Because they got to go second, we can use those scouts to chase those scouts off, which will allow our elite riders to slip along the north side of the table and escape without much ado. Remember, the elite riders are hard to activate because they only move on... I think you need to roll a 7-up to move them, don't you? Yeah, they only move on a 7-up, so they're going to be the hard ones to kind of get into position. And... They have Wild Charge, which means they are likely to be drawn into that fight that won't go our way if these scouts are still here and still causing trouble. One last scenario-specific rule. The Dark Elves cannot issue an attack or a shoot order on the first two turns of the game. They are being ambushed, after all. And speaking of, we're going to play until one of the Warbands does not have a unit left on the table. At that point, the game is over, and we tally up our victory points. The last thing we need to do before we start the game proper with an activation by the undead is roll for our general special abilities. Again, red for undead. With a result of a five, the undead are going to get cowardly. The leader unit may not be given an attack order. He can only make wild charges. With a result of a nine, 
The leader's unit is not affected by fear. So the only thing we have here is that our Necromancer is a coward. Should be easy to remember. He can use Wild Charge, but I don't, I don't remember. Do Elite Foot have Wild Charge? They don't. They have Ranger. They fight fine in combat. But that's fine because they're a defensive force. They're going to be fighting on the defense the entire time anyway. I am going to be rolling activations, figure, declaring actions, and then measuring and moving all my guys after I've figured out who fails. Remember, when you fail an activation, that means that your turn is over. I'm going to start with these light foot. We want to get them into position where they can form wall of spears next turn. With a five, they are successful. Elite foot need a five to succeed. We're going to rush them up to the center. And with a deuce, we're done. So here you can see those light foot have moved up. We're going to start with our greater war beast. He's going to charge up this way. With a result of an eight, he will be able to move five inches. And that puts him right about here. Then we'll bring our light missiles up. We may be able to stand off and just plink away at those guys. Light missiles are going to be able to move up three inches. I'll actually, in this case, double check. Light missiles move, yeah, just three inches. So we'll bring one guy up to there to indicate where they stopped. And then we're going to try to bring these guys up on a five or better, which they do. So they'll come up to here. And I think with the light, now we got to decide between these two forces. I think we bring these guys up a little bit. We need to push them forward. We do get a success there. And now we'll see if we can move our elite riders. And they don't. So they're just going to park right there. Once again, these guys are going to go first. We're going to try to form Wall of Spears with an eight. They do. Then we want to bring our elite foot out with a five. They will be able to move just three inches, and this is why I really need these guys to hoof it, because it's a long way to seal up the center of the table. This might be a bit of a challenge. And then with the light missiles, again, they're not going to activate. That's going to be the end of the turn for the undead. The Dark Elves still cannot issue an attack order. They're too far away to do so. Anyway, we're going to try to push our Greater War Beast up, moving on a six, and we get it. Five full inches. If we skirt this area here, we will not be subject to wild charge. He only needs to wild charge he, anybody within five inches. Then we're going to try to bring our... Let's bring these guys up next. Looking for a five. We fail. That's going to be the end of the turn. And now the dogs of war are unleashed for the dark elves. They can shoot and attack. Looking at things from the undead perspective, our light foot are right, right where we want them to be. we got to move these guys up. Again, we're looking for a big number. With the six, we get it. They're going to be able to move up three inches to here. They are safe from the shooters, which is another thing we kind of wanted to do. And now we can start thinking about bringing in some more boys on in the next turn. We're going to try to bring the light shooters up. We want to leave them in this area. But if we can get them up to here, that extends their range far enough that it really chokes out the options for the Dark Elves. That they're going to really be running through a pretty significant gauntlet by putting them right there. I think that's it for this turn for these guys. We're comfortable with the undead. That being the case, we don't want our War Beast running off on his own unsupported. We're going to try to bring these guys up on a 5 or better. They get it. And then we'll bring our light missiles up as well. And on a three, that's all we're going to be able to do. Looking at the table from the west side, here's our light shooters. Here's our elite foot. Our general is going to try to summon his second unit of light foot right about here. He needs a six or better to do it, and he gets it. And really, I, I think that's all we're going to do. He gets to summon them within six inches. He's going to drop them right here. Now, they're not in Wall of Spears at this point. They just appear. They can't take any actions of this turn. They have to wait for next turn. The Dark Elves are a little slow out of the starting gate. Once again, we're going to try to bring these guys up to support. We need a five or better. We get it. We'll try to bring our light missiles up on a, seven or, a six or better. We get it. On this side of the battlefield, we're going to try to bring our scouts up. Looking for a five, and we get it. And we might as well go ahead, I think we're actually going to bring these guys around this side. If we get a 7 or higher, which we do. The most important thing to do on the undead side of the table is get these guys into shield wall. Needing a 5 on an 8, they do. They're very, very tippy today, I'm not sure what's going on there. And then I think we'll go ahead and bring our general over one more time. And on a 4, maybe we won't. We're going to start by ordering a shoot action for our light missiles on this shield wall here. 
On a six, they will activate. Now, normally, because they are further than six inches away, they'd be hitting on sixes. However, I purchased Sharpshooter, so they will still be hitting on fives. And we'll see how many we get first. We get a total of one, two, three, four all together. And because these Lightfoot are in a shield wall, their armor goes from two to three. So instead of taking two casualties, they're only going to take one casualty. They will have to take a morale check, but I'm not even going to bother rolling because remember the way undead works. The only way to get them off the field is for them to roll a negative result. The least they can roll is a two minus the one means they're going to succeed. They're also within six inches of their, their general unit. So they're going to be at plus one for that. The lowest they can roll is two. They're going to be fine. Then we have to figure out what to do. We're going to bring our our uh, our blocking fullback is going to move up. And on a four, he's not. Really struggling with the activations today, aren't we? Well, that would be first blood, but these are skeletons. They don't have any blood. The undead get to go. We're going to bring our elite boss man over here on a result of a six. And I think that's the only movement we really want to do at this point. One, two, three, we'll give these guys time to retreat back. But basically what this does is it allows us to uh, kind of swing around to that side and block that area. We've got some shooters with a range to about right here, so we really need to push our leader over that way. And that's all we want to do. We're just going to kind of stand here and take it, see what the Dark Elves do. You know, I don't mind failed activations as a gamer because there's a lot of back and forth. Everybody fails all the time. As a guy trying to film a YouTube, though, it's it's really frustrating to have to reset my lights and my camera. So I'm going to pull back to this fairly static shot for you guys. I think we're condensed enough you can see the action, and we can just go ahead and say, look, I'm going to shoot with these guys. And if they fail, well, hey, they don't. And, and honestly, part of the reason I'm doing this now is because I sense that uh, by declaring that I'm not moving the camera anymore, we're going to see a whole lot of clean sweeps on both sides. Well, we have that shot. Same thing as before. We need to score at least three, and we get a single hit out of that die roll. A lot of ones and twos. That's fine. Smoke them out early there, boys, because you're not always going to be that lucky. We're going to try to move this big boy up. On an 11, we will, and he is going to move five inches up to here. He is now stuck wild charging on the next turn. We're going to bring our support up behind him, and with a result of a four, we are not going to do that after all. Instead, our undead general will continue his shift over to the side. With a result of a four, he's going to stand stock still. And we kick back over to, why don't we take another shot with our bowman? On a result of an eight, we are successful. Oh, no. First thing we have to do is the wild charge. On the eight, the wild charge is successful. Our tree demon is going to mix it up with a wall of spears. The tree demon is attacking... And he is going to be hitting, so the blue dice are hitting on threes. The light foot are going to be hitting on fours. So threes for the blue, fours for the red, and then we'll tally them up. Our red gets a really solid hit of one, two, three, four hits on the, eight hits on the greater war beast. That's going to do a total of two wounds to him. He's already down to almost half. I'm telling you, man, the Wall of Spears is really devastating when you pull it off. For his part, the Greater War Beast is going to score one, two, three, four, five, six hits. That will pull off two casualties. And once again, two is not enough with the backing of the leader. They are going to be at a total of minus one. They can't roll less than that than their Courage. But he can. He is at minus two. He's too far away from his leader to, to benefit from the support. So our greater war beast with a courage of three up is looking to roll a five or better. On a four, he is going to be battered and he is going to retreat half a move. We're going to pull him back a little bit out of the way to here. And he is going to earn the battered marker, the red gem. Now that was the wild charge. It was not a failed activation. Now we're going to see if our shooters can pull one off. With a result of a 7, they will take a shot at this wall of spears down here. And the red dice are close, so I'm just going to use them there. We're hitting on 5s. We need to score at least 3 5s. We get 1, 2, 3 5s. We do another wound. And because the leader is so far away, if we roll snake eyes, these guys will retreat. 
and the, with a six there, they won't. Then we're going to try to bring this unit of foot up into the action on a result of a five. They will elite foot activate on a five. They're going to swing up to about there. Heavy foot activate on a five. The elite riders are going to try to move. We're looking for a seven or better. And we get it, much to my surprise. Five inches will bring them up to here. And since there's just the three of them, we're going to once again, we're going to try to skirt the edge and try not to wild charge this unit over here. The last unit we have to bring up is this unit of scouts, and they will move three inches as well. The Banshees are going to wail at the Dark Elf Scouts. They need a six or better to activate on an eight. They do. They are only going to be hitting on sixes, but Scouts only have an armor of one. So for every six, they will hit. So they're going to do one, two, three, four hits worth of damage to these guys. That's pretty devastating. That is a pretty effective use of Scouts right there, if I say so myself. The... Scouts that were hit are going to have to make a morale check, and scouts are not the bravest. They need a 9 to pass this. With a 6, it's not going to happen. They will retreat the inch and a half back out of the rough going. Then we're going to try to bring our elite foot up one more time, and with a, with a success, we'll move them 3 inches up to here. And that will be it for the undead. These elite foot are going to be our backstop. The nah, play then kicks over. I guess we could probably bring these guys out. I don't think we want to do that, though. I think we're going to hang on and let the Dark Elves go. So the first thing we need to do is figure out whether this guy can recover. With a result of a 7, he has a courage of 3. He will at least lose the gem. And he is not a half strength, so he's got that going for him. Then we got to bring these, now we got to do our shoot action next. That's the big one. We're trying to clear these guys out as much as possible. On a four, our turn is over, and the undead get to go. We're going to take another shot with these scouts, still within, and it gets even worse because the dark elf scouts are within six inches, but they are unfortunately going to be hitting on fives this time. So if we get even a couple of fives, which we do, pair of sixes is going to wipe this unit out, and... That's my first experience with scouts. They are a heck of a lot tougher than I realized. And I think the next order of the day, we're going to move him just one more time. With a result of a five, elite foot do move, and we're just going to squeeze him over this way a little bit. Now remember that he can't issue an attack order. He's kind of a coward. But what this does is it forces other guys to come to him or to come through here and run the gauntlet with these light missiles who are just off the screen in this corner. The first order of business for the wild charge is this guy right here. Result of an eight, he will charge in and get stuck in one more time. Let's see if he has any more luck this time, shall we? For, the, for their part, the undead are going to roll and they get a total of one, two, three, four... What are they defending at? This is this is an, an, a defense attack for the light foot. They are hitting on fours. One, two, three, four, five, six hits altogether is going to do just one hit. He is now down to half strength. And he has to pass a morale check. A result of a five minus three. No. Is he within six inches of his general? He, he barely is. We'll give it to him. So he gets a result of a seven, uh, excuse me, a three. Is that good enough for a greater war beast? It is. With a result of a three, he is still in the fight, but he is at half strength. That's it for the compulsory moves for the Dark Elves. Next up is going to be bringing these guys forward. And these are the guys we really want to attack here. Three inches will bring them up to here. Then we're going to take our shot with our missiles, trying to drive these guys off, and with a result of a 5, they fail. That ends the turn. But before we go any further, I forgot to roll the counterattack by our tree demon. And he is going to roll a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hits. He's going to eliminate 3 more of these skeletons. Leaving just 7 on the table... They are going to be rolling at a minus 6. Result of a 10 minus 6, they're still in the fight. 
But he does need to fall back the half a move, two and a half inches to about there. Now it is the undead turn. We're going to try to bring these scouts out into this area. And that's going to be the end of the turn. All right, our tree demon is once again going to go plunging in with a 12. He's going to succeed. And he is at half strength now after that last turn. So he's only rolling six dice. The With seven boys still in the mix, our skeletons are going to get to roll all 12. And all the same numbers apply. Our tree demon is going to do one, two, three hits is enough to remove one more. And now these skeletons are fighting at half strength. For their part, the skeletons are hitting on fours. They're going to score one, two, three. They're going to score one hit. And then they have a little bit of slop left over. That puts him at four casualties. He's rolling a morale check looking for a six. He's at minus three total. And his courage is three. Six, he gets it, so he's still in the fight. These guys are at minus five to their roll. And with the snake eyes, they crumble away to dust. A negative result for an undead. They're never battered, but if they roll a zero or less, they will simply crumble away. That is only the start of the turn. We still want to try to bring these guys up to here. On a nine, they will move three inches. Now they can't, the way I'm using my one inch border is, by inch and a half, is the width of this, this guy right here. So if I bring my light foot up, they're going to have to come up three inches and they're going to have to kind of fill in a little something like this so that they can maintain that buffer between themselves and the greater war beast, at least on this turn. Now, ultimately that moves them only an inch or two up the table, but it does move them up the table. We're going to take it. We're also going to take a shot with our shooters. With the result of a 12, we get it. That will be 12d6, and we are looking to score... Uh, a minimum of three hits on those light guys. We're looking for fives. We get one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to remove two more skeletons. And it forces a morale check at a total of minus four. Ten minus four. They're okay, but their numbers are going down, on down, down all the time. We want to try to bring our elite riders up. And with the result of a 7, we actually get the move action. Let's see how far 5 inches is. Again, we're going to have to leave them. So 5 inches will take them up to right about here. And again, we're, we're trying to avoid wild charging into these light foot. So we're skirting the side here, using the ter terrain to our advantage. I think that's going to be it for Team Dark Elf. Remember our summoner is a coward? He has another little trick up his sleeve. He's going to try to summon a unit of zombies. Now, zombies aren't great, but we can drop them right here. And if they can even just score a single hit on that war beast, then it's really going to help our efforts to win the game. The zombies don't get to do anything but stand there this turn like a bunch of slack-jawed dopes. The next thing we're going to do is try to bring our scouts over. We want to get them into this rough going. With a result of a six, we will. We will be able to move them at any rate. They're going to need one more action to get inside that rough going. Now, they are further than five inches away. That does not trigger a wild charge for our elite riders. However, our big boy, our tree demon, does have his attack order, Kablau, and he's going to go piling into the zombies. In this case, the zombies are classed as hordes. They are terrible. They are only hitting on sixes. I will roll for them first. They need to get four of them. One, two, three. Ain't gonna cut it. But it does slow him up a little bit longer, and he is going to have to make an attack, and he's hitting on threes every single hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He is going to eliminate all but four of these guys. That is a heck of a speed bump right there, fellas, who now have to make a morale check at minus seven. Five minus seven means these other four just go bye bye Hey, it was worth a shot, right? And in, in a game like this where you're buying for time, playing for time, that can be worthwhile. Uh, then we have to decide, we're going to try, ooh, so that's his action. Hmm... Mm -mm -mm. 
We're going to take the shot down here against these guys. With a result of a 7, we get the shot off. Again, we're looking for 5s and 6s. We get a total of 1, 2, 3, which will only do one wound to these guys. But it does force them to make a morale check at minus 5. And with Snake Eyes, they crumble to dust. Which opens a path for our elite riders to try... Do we want to swing them wide this way, or do we want to avoid... Bear in mind, these guys have a line, and this whole area is protected by the archers. We do not want to put ourselves in a position where we're charging these archers and fighting in rough going, so instead, we're going to try to move over this way. With a result of a 9, we get it, and that 5 inches. Now, we can't wild charge these guys, but it does put us within charging range, so we got to hope that these scouts don't successfully activate. We may be able to ride them down and swing around that side on the next turn. It's all going to depend what happens next. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and bring these guys up three inches. Result of an eight is successful. This heavy foot, our general, is going to be stuck taking a couple of licks from the shooters. But we're going to bring these shooters up as well. And on a six, they will move three inches. That will end the turn. First thing we want to do is protect our scouts. Get them into here. And an 8, they will be able to move 3 inches, and if we measure, that is going to put this front rank into the heavy grass. That is rough going. Now, they are fleet of foot, so they can move through there without any issue. Now, it's going to be they're going to be triggering some wild charges. The next thing we're going to do, we can't attack with these guys, but like I said, we can shoot with this unit of light missiles down here. They are going to activate on a 6 or better, and on a 4, they fail. How about that? That ends the turn. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We have a heck of a scrum here in the center of the table. I'm going to wild charge. You get to pick which of your wild charging units charges first. So I'm going to bring my greater war beast into the action first. On a result of a six, the greater war beast will make his attack action. He is going to be attacking. Now, he is both, he is a ranger. He's not fleet of foot, but he is within two and a half inches. So he will get into contact with these scouts. Then, to make life worse for them, he's a ranger. He suffers no ill effects from fighting in rough going. Both sides are going to roll uh, 12d6. Oh, no, that's not right. He's only going to roll 6 because he is still at half strength. But because he's attacking, he is going to be hitting on 3s. They have an armor of 1... So he's going to do three hits all together. And I'm going to pull these three guys off the back. For their part, our scouts, because they're defending, they're only hitting on six. Oh, no, wait, because they are, they are not rangers. And here's where scouts really benefit. Because they're fighting in rough going, their attack and defense values drops to five instead of six. I mean, it didn't do them any good this time because I didn't roll any fives. But they got one, two, three hits. And unfortunately, with an armor of three, that's not going to do them any good. They are within six inches of their leader. They're making a morale check at minus two. And four minus two, six minus two is still a positive number. They stay in the fight. He's got to back off that inch and a half. Unfortunately, he was not able to clear them out, which means our elite riders are going to have to fight. On a nine, they will complete their charge. And they are at full strength, so they'll get to roll all 12 dice. However, because they are not rangers, because they are fighting in the rough going, they are only hitting on fives. So all of these dice are going to be hitting on fives. The red for undead get a total of two hits, which does no casualties. The boys with the blue, I'm going to bring them up because it looks like they're going to do one Oh, the fives are hit, so there's one hit, two hit. Ooh, they only did two so far. And that means our lone banshee is going to be making a morale check at a total of minus four. With a six, he stays in contact, and these guys have to back off for yet another turn. We'll kind of swing them around this way just to show which way they are pointed. And that's going to be it for the heavy hitters on the part of the Dark Elves. Now we have a choice. Do we run away with these guys, or do we try to attack these elite foot? 
I kind of think we want to go up against the elite foot. Our heavy foot are going to be attacking with a value of five. Oh, they're better on the defense, aren't they? Oh, that makes it easy. And heavy foot, do they have any? All they have is a wall of spears. So we're going to activate them on as a move order. And I guess it didn't matter what we declared because they were going to fail regardless. Remember when I mentioned I was using scouts for the first time? It turns out when you shoot at scouts, they have an armor of two. I think the Dark Elves should not have taken quite so many casualties. I think there might have been a... I think I might have cheated them out of a better fight in the grasslands up there on the north. Be that as it may, we're going to go ahead and start off by taking a shot with these light missiles at this heavy infantry. And with an 11, we're going to get it. We are going to be hitting on sixes against an armor of, because they are still long range, against an armor of three. We're just looking for three sixes. We only get one. Hmm. Maybe this wasn't such a great plan after all. Then, oh, we can't do anything with these guys, so we might as well try to shoot with our last remaining unit. On a result of a 10, we get it. He is at half strength. Who are we shooting at here? Let's shoot at the greater war beast, shall we? We need to score. Um, he is close range. Shoot actions on a 5 or better. We're going to score a total of 3 hits against a greater war beast with an armor of 4. We're going to get no casualties, and that is going to end the turn... Man, things are getting really rough. Now that those light foot are gone for the undead, things are getting tough. We need to do our wild charge. And with an 8, we succeed. And we're going to roll 6 dice for the tree demon, who will be hitting on his usual 3s. Come on, baby. There we go. And he gets it. So that wipes out the banshees. But the banshees with their half strength, do get to try to roll. If we can get four fives, four fives, fives and sixes, we only get one, so he doesn't take any additional damage from that. And that really frees things up for our... Well, let's try and bring our, our bows. You can't see them, but on a four, they're going to fail to move up. All right, we'll take advantage of that by trying to take another shot at these guys. With a six, we're successful. The red are going to roll 12 dice. And as always, we're trying to roll... If we can just get three sixes, we can force a morale check. Again, we only get one six. These guys can't do anything. Let's, let's go ahead and... Um, they're about to get wild charged, aren't they? Let's pull back a little bit. We, we need to get some space so we don't wind up fighting somebody that's in... I think if either side is in the rough going, then these guys would only be hitting on four uh, on the normally elite foot defend on a four. If they're defending against somebody who's charging them out of the woods, they would be defending on a five. So we like that. That ends the undead turn. And now we have to decide. Well, we have a wild charge coming. On a seven, the big boy charges these elite foot. Remember, he's attacking at half strength. So I will grab all 12 red dice, and I will grab six of the blue dice. Elite Foot. Because he's attacking, he hits on threes, but the blue dice are going to need to score four hits to do a casualty. We score one, two, three, and our tree man does no good. The Elite Foot are defending now, so they have a defense value of four. They're going to get one, two, and, and that's it. Not enough to do any casualties against the big boy. He's going to drift back, and now we have to decide what to do with the rest of these guys. Do we bring... Do we run? I think we do. We're going to bring these guys up. Looking for a five. They get it. They're going to move three inches straight ahead. One, two, three. They do not have wild charge. They are not required to... Charge the nearest foe. I think this is going to put them within six inches. They may take a couple of casualties from those bowmen, but I think they can. I think they can handle that. Then we're going to try to bring our bowmen up. We need a six or better. Those guys are going to come up, and these are the guys that we kind of lingered and, and kind of dilly dallied back there. These are the guys that are going to be in trouble trying to get them off the table. So we'll bring them up to there. And the last unit we have to do is our elite riders who are going to swing wide around that way on a 7 or better, and they fail to move, so they're just going to hang tight. 
Now we have to decide what to do with these guys. I think, and they, you know, they can't do anything. So we're just taking a shot. But within six inches now means, well, first of all, do they get it off? On a five, they do not. Failed activation. Our leader is going to get another. Well, we got to do our wild charge first, don't we? And right into the skull. With a seven, the wild charge is successful. Let's see if the attack is successful. Even if we do one casualty, I think that might pay off dividends in the long run. Kind of impressed with how sticky this tree man is. I expected him to... He's a pretty sappy guy, I guess. On a five... So we got a three, five, and a six. So no casualties for him. The elite foot now are going to be able to score one, two, three. They're going to do two more hits on the guy. And that is going to remove him from the table. You only had two left. That was our first wild charge. Now these guys are going to swing around this way. Wait. We got to move these guys next. With a five, we just barely pull that off. So we're going to bring them three inches up to here. And now I want to bring them all up, and I will take the time to move these figures on camera because... We're getting down to the end. Now, do we bring our... We're going to bring our shooters up next. They're not quite in range of the elite foot. And that's where things... That's where these abilities really start. There is some surprising sophistication in this rule set. The fact that our general cannot issue an attack order really hamstrings him. We could just hold off. And if we're patient, we can just slowly pincushion him with these guys. In fact, if you can get into his backfield... Like, he can't attack these guys. They can just run right past him. There is some significant possibility for roleplay here. He's going to just watch them wander up, wander off. I'm trying to move this last unit up here. They are not going to do it. The elite riders are just... They're, they're, they're fighters. They're not joggers. They're not, they're, they don't want to They don't want to move unless they can move into contact with people is kind of how it works. So now we're into the realm of, you know, I, I, I guess we take a shot with our shooters at these guys. We're going to get that shot off, and we're going to be hitting on fives and sixes. We're shooting at a unit that has an armor value of um, the heavy foot, have an armor value of three, looking for five, and they only get one. So again, no damage. These shooters are just terrible. And, and there's, there's really nothing he can do at this point. If they don't charge him, he can't attack them. We're going to move these guys up, try to get them off the table. Three more inches. And not only that, but since we don't have to worry about that guy, we're going to try to move in this direction so we can get out of the range of those shooters. And... As things stand right now, the score is still zero points for the Dark Elves. To, uh, I think it's two points for, no, it's four points to the Undead. They have eliminated two units. So the next thing we'll do is we'll try to bring these guys around the horn, and on a seven they'll move, and then we'll bring these guys up this way as well. And they're not going to move. Our undead shooters get another shot at these heavy foot. With a three, they will fail to activate. So the heavy foot are going to roll to see if they move three inches to here. And they are almost off the table. But more importantly, they are now... Let's make sure we know where we're moving. Yep, they are going to be out of range of those shooters. So one more activation gets our general off the board. But he's going to hang tight. He wants to see what happens here. We are... More than six inches away. We're going to move our shooters up here. We're going to try to keep them out of the arc of fire of these guys. On an eight, they will move. And we're comfortable bringing them up to here. Like so. So that on the next turn, we can start shooting at those elite infantry. And we'll just stand here and shoot them up until they move out of the way or they're I, oh you know what i forgot to do though before i did that these guys have a wild charge in fact even before that movement we should have done this wild charge we have a big combat elites versus elites the riders are going to be hitting on threes and the foot are going to be hitting on fours everybody involved in this has an armor of four so i'm not anticipating a lot of death here 
But, I mean, it's, you know, high armor, high attack values, blue dice looking for threes. We'll re-roll that one because it wasn't in the group. So we get, um, and we're looking for groups of four. So there is a total of one hit for the riders, and I think that's it. Looking for fours on the red dice, we get a total of one, two, three hits. So the foot do no casualties, but they take one themselves. They're going to have to pass a morale check. It's an even check, and they can't fail because, once again, they are classed as undead, and an undead at minus one are guaranteed to roll at least one. With the failed attack, the elite rider drifts back, and then we do the movement and the movement, and now we're done. Our elite, right, our elite boys cannot attack. They have to just stand there. These guys are now going to have to come out because of what's going on here, and... They're not going to be defended anymore, but at least they're going to be able to force these other shooters to take some action to drive them out of the way. Or those elite riders are going to have to ride them down. They're not great in a, in a fist fight, but at least they can do some damage. Maybe force some morale check. Maybe you get that snake eyes and you're good. Again, these guys are happy where they're standing, so we do our, our uh, wild charge. Kablow! And it's going to be the exact same thing as last time. Blue dice hitting on threes, red dice hitting on fours. And this time our red dice are going to have a much better roll. There is one hit and some slop. Oh, not quite enough. Hitting on threes, we get a total of one hit on each side. So the undead lose one, and our riders lose one. And the riders have to make a morale check. They are beyond 12 inches of the general, so their morale check is at minus one. With a result of a six, they are fine. And these guys are anything, let's see, they're still at a total of minus one because they have the general. It's two casualties plus one for the general. Whatever I roll, it's going to be a positive number. Now our shooters get to get into the action. They are going to be hitting on fours. Well, we have to roll for activation first, remember. On a six, they will be successful. I purchased sharpshooters. This is a short-range attack, so th these blue dice now are hitting on fours. We have to get at least four of them. We get a total of one, two, three, four with a little bit of slop, and that takes off one more elite foot. Now, a result of a snake eyes means the general goes bye-bye, and he does not. By the way, neither of these forces is at less than half of their strength points. 9 plus another 3 is 12. So once we lose one of these, the other unit will have to make a morale check. But be that as it may, we now have our shooters are going to take a shoot action. With a 5, they are not. We have these shooters over here who are going to be shooting at these guys and hitting on 6s unless we want to move up and expose ourselves, which I think we do. I think these guys really need to be shooting at short range because they're looking for the fives. And also, this might draw fire away from those elites who are now at half strength. Um, and speaking of which, they can't do anything, so play kicks over. we got to do our wild charge, and a six will be successful. We'll move a couple of guys up. And this time around, the undead are only going to get to roll six dice. They are at half strength. They are still hitting on fours, and they only get a pair, so they don't do any damage. The elite riders now are going to be hitting on threes, and they get a total of one, two, three, four, so that's one more death, and hitting on threes. You know what? I stand corrected. The black wizard stands alone, making his morale check. He succeeds. And that pushes these guys back. And Well, it, it's actually just an inch and a half in this case. Then these guys are going to take a shot at the general, hitting on a six. And on a three, they fail to activate. So that means they're going to have to take a shot from these guys who do activate on a six. And with all six, they are going to be hitting on fives against a unit that has an armor of two. Hitting on fives, that's one, two. There's the, the big hit we were looking for. Three casualties, one, two, three. 
leaving two, four, six, eight, nine. So we are at minus three on this roll. Seven minus three is a four. Our shooters have a courage. Light missiles have a courage of four. They're okay. They'll stick around for one more turn. And that means we're doing a wild charge here. The wild charge is successful. And as before, it's going to be six red versus 12 blue. Trying to ride that general down. I think these elite riders are... This is where they're really in their element, isn't it? One, two, three, four hits. The general is gone. But for his part, the general is not going to go down easy. He is going to roll a total of four hits. And he's going to take another one with him. And that means we have a morale check at minus two. Ten, they're okay. They're going to stop. Although, you know, to be fair, they did ride up. So they should be right about here. Which means our sharpshooters are going to get some revenge by shooting these guys. They are successful. We'll roll 12 dice to see how many casualties they get. Hitting on fours, every pair nets them a kill. And we get a total of one kill. All right, well, it ain't nothing. And is that the first casualty for this unit? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. It is. So they don't even have to make a morale check. But we do have one last move for our general, who does not move. Shooters are going to take a shot at these guys, trying to knock them down to half strength. With an 11, they'll get it. Hitting on fives. Remember, the difference between a full strength and a half strength guy unit is pretty big. They're only going to eliminate one, but that's going to be a morale check at now minus four. Nine minus four is five. That is passing. Wild charge at a seven will be successful. And now it's going to get ugly. It's going to be a the shooters are defending on sixes. And our attackers are hitting on threes. So if our red dice don't have a full Yahtzee, they won't even do a single point of damage. They only get a single six. The elite riders, however, are going to get one pair, two pair, three pair, four, and five all together. What a great roll. One, two, three, four, five. I'll pull them off the back like this. That is going to put these guys... Uh, I suppose they should have made a morale check because they lost their general, too. They're going to make a morale check at a total of minus six. And with a five, they will stay on the table. So we'll push these guys back, that inch and a half. But they also are going to have to eat another shot from these guys who are going to be rolling and hitting on fours. And every pair of fours now will lead to a casualty. We get one, two, three more deaths. Rolling at minus nine with no general. A seven minus nine means that unit is eliminated. And that's it. That's the end of the game. So, now let's tally up our victory points. Our defender gets three points for every unit of half strength that it moves off the table. Half strength or more. Three, six, nine points to the defender. The attacker earns two glory for every unit destroyed or routed. They were only able to manage two of those. So with a score of nine to four... The Dark Elves have proved their metal, and that's not even their full power. As I said, we still have another unit of elites, or maybe scouts, and another unit of sword guys yet to be painted, but but our, our general Dark Elf here, he's the man. I This figure, he's considerably older than, but he looks very much like the... Um, what do they call those golden armored guys in the G-Dubs universe, in their fantasy... I don't even know, like, like Storm Brothers or something. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this fight of Dragon Rampant. A little bit of an unusual scenario, and not just to line them up and bash them. A little bit more thinking, and some really fun interactions between the special abilities. What do you do with an elite foot that refuses to engage the enemy? Get them in charge of some of those, uh, those boys with wild charge, right? That's really about all you can do. Use them as a, as a super powerful speed bump. It's what we did. Didn't work out so well for the Black Wizard today. Maybe it will next time. Find out. Tune in in a couple of days. The next edition. Till then, I'm praying for you.